Good evening, uh, all survivors out there. Uh, call to order the regular council meeting for Tuesday, October 20. And first, just to adopt the agenda. Councilor McKenzie, Councilor Arnold, Bill and Phil. Oh, motion carries, thank you. And adoption of the minutes of the regular council meeting of October 6th. So uh, moved. Both of Councilor uh, Scarrow. Errors or omissions? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Those, motion carries, thank you. Um, no report from the mayor tonight. No announcements tonight. Nothing's happening anymore. No delegation, no permissions. Uh, <clears throat> public comment. Anybody wish to address council on any item of concern? Uh, second time. Councillor Scarrow, I I'm asking the gallery, not the. Oh, the regional report? Carry on. Uh, sir, I was, I was questioning the regional board's approved withdrawing from the Sustainable Transportation Partnership of the Central Okanagan. Can you kind of talk to us a little bit about the reason that happened? The Regional District Parks Department considered uh, that Fintry is not a regional park, it's a provincial park, and that they uh, shouldn't be continuing to subsidize and or uh, assist the Friends of Fintry Society in their management of the historic part of the, uh, the Fintry Provincial Park. That was the issue that uh, was raised. And the fact that the regional district contributed funds towards the purchase of it and um, uh, we consider that we have a stake in it, we being the regional board at the time, and uh, it uh, is certainly a, a heritage aspect that should be continued and it's very difficult to continue the heritage uh, without some provincial uh, and or federal help. So <clears throat> it's um, unfortunate and it's still being looked at and it may be reconsidered, but uh, that is, uh, they're phasing out the funding for the Fintry, uh, Friends of Fintry Society. And they have other park societies that they don't fund, like the Friends of the Mission Creek and Friends of Galatly and Friends of whatever, but they do a lot of work on those parks. We, uh, the Friends of Fintry gets the province to do the work on on the Fintry Park, so I think they're well worth the funding that we've been putting, but we get outvoted, we being the smaller uh, voting numbers. Appreciate your clarification. Okay. Yes. I think uh, Councillor Scarrow was referring to removing himself from, removing from the SDCPO. That was. Oh, I thought it was Fintry uh, funding. My SKP question, sir, was about my question was about the regional board withdrawing from sustainable transportation partnership. But I value the information you just gave me on interest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, and the STPCO is is morphing into another uh, aspect of um, uh, uh, transportation uh, management, uh, so that uh, it is. It says here it was unsustainable in its present form. Yeah, and uh, suggested that the RDCO could create a new regional transit ser transportation service providing some exactly. of the STPCO. Yeah, and so it's a uh, it's uh, a streamlining, in a sense, and uh, trying to get uh, more on uh, transit than uh, 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 car centric, if at all possible, in our transportation activities. So. We'll see where we get to with it. I appreciate that enlightenment as well. <laughs> um, where are we? Public comment? Second time of asking. <laughs> yeah. Third time of asking. Done, everybody? 
All right, we'll move on to planning department, development related, development permit, you're up. My Thank you, Your Worship. Is that me? Just love the presentation, Your Worship. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, this evening, I'd like to start by just noting that uh, because the applications are very similar and within the same vicinity, if not near identical, uh, we've put together a presentation that includes both applications, both DVP 2020-006 and DVP 2020-009. Uh, because these have to be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, I will stop uh, for council debate after the first set of options is presented uh, so that the minutes read accordingly. <laughs> I would also like to note at the outset uh, that these properties are owned as part of a multitude of land holdings within the district that the owner currently has. This application must be assessed based on the existing land use regulations and zoning. Any future changes to land use or water use would be at the purview of council through a rezoning application. Council may have noted uh, the referral from the Ministry of Forest Lands and Natural Resource Operations that have also noted that there would be requirements that they require as part of any change in use. And lastly, if a dock anywhere in the district is not used accordingly, there are mechanisms in place for enforcement. Uh, carrying on, the zoning for the properties is RR3, Rural Residential 3. Uh, the, the OCP future land use designation is Rural Residential and the addresses for the two properties are 14824 and 14838 Cars Landing Road. These properties do move south to north. Uh, and the subject this evening is a development variance permit, specifically changed the shape of a dock and the material used for pilings. You can see here the location as noted, uh, south to north, 14824 Cars Landing is 0 0.31 hectares and 14838 is very close in size at 0 0.32 hectares, essentially uh, 0 0.8 acres. Here's an aerial. This is uh, Google Earth rendering just showing different uh, areas and just right here this is the property here just because the property lines and then this is the other property councillor scarrow had a question just while you've got that picture up paul or perhaps there's a better one can you identify the road allowance that we have rights to uh on that picture or should i wait for a map um, no, I could do that here. Uh, this is our road of allowance here. This is outside of the property lines. And then you will uh, see here that these properties have a shared access easement. Um, we also have some sort of uh, access for water um, going to the lake down that hill from that road allowance. Could I, I see that, please? Excuse me, I'm not able, thanks. We didn't get what you said. Oh, we got good now. Maybe go here. Uh, so the road access that you'd be talking about here is this is district right away in here as well. So that square is the district right away? Right in here. 
that you, uh, and where there's it, no property lines. Is it connected to um, the road allowance at any point? Um, that's a great question. I don't have a map oh, zoomed up far enough, um, but there would be access at some point uh, to that area. Thank you for your answers, Paul. So what we have here is for 14824 Cars Landing Road. This is an area variance map. Uh, you can see here that the request is to change the zoning bylaw, uh, section 10124C uh, from an L or T shaped dock to a U shaped dock. Um, accordingly, uh, there's also a request to change 10124H uh, and that's for the materials from wood to steel piles. And those aren't shown on the drawing, it's just a basic drawing here. <laughs> and also for council, you will notice that there are access stairs along the foreshore. Um, there's very little change between these two, so I won't be belabor. The main difference between the two drawings is that for 14838, there is a boat lift on the side of the dock on the north side. So that's the main difference between the two. So these were pic pictures taken today uh, down at the site. You will see that the applicant has began construction of the docks uh, within the allowable limits uh, currently. However, I must say that those are steel pilings. So, excuse me, Paul. Your worship, I believe. Uh... Um, Councilor Campbell. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I just had a question um, about the size of the two docks. Um, and you're telling us that the current pilings are uh, steel, so they're replacing them with more steel pilings. Um, can you tell us um, how much larger these dock, the, the both proposed docks will be? Um, because the shape will be quite different and how many boats each one could accommodate. So I'm not sure of the size difference uh, between what existed before. These are actually being newly constructed as we speak, um, which is why I noticed that the steel piles are in currently. So a bit of a risk for the applicant uh, due to council purview. Um, and the, the docks are within what we call general permissions of the province. Um, and the only regulations that they don't meet uh, are what they're varying currently this evening. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Reid. Sorry, um, just to that point, Paul, I noticed that Flinro has a section 11 work within a stream, uh, in and around a stream, and that hasn't yet been submitted or approved to the province. So the application has, the process has started before that section 11 has been completed. That is possible. Uh, when the application was submitted, uh, it does note that they had submitted for Section 11 right. and that it has not been approved yet. Okay. Uh, whether or not it has been approved since a submission of the application, I can't speak to that. Perhaps the applicant could. Um, so that's the short answer I, to I, the question. I think that would be good to have that at some point because I noticed one of the comments from our CAO was that we could approve if we were going to approve with a caveat around a section 11 so if we know in advance whether we need to keep that in or not then that would be good. Yeah, if I, can I clarify that Absolutely. actually um yes you're correct um probably the wording is not exactly what uh, i meant but uh, uh because you can't put really con any conditions to a dvp or a dp oh, okay. but what you can do is you can defer this until the approval of section 11 is granted Thank you. Carry on. And conversely, this is 14838 Cars Landing Road. Again, the site photos, and of course, you can see the other dock in the background as these properties are right next door to each other. So background, the applicant applied for a variance for dock shape and a change to the materials for piles on February 27th of this year, and it was considered complete on August 21st. The applicant is requesting a variance, as noted earlier, uh, to both uh, the shape of the dock as well as a change in materials from wood to steel for the pilings. Uh, the requested change is not expected to have any more impact on the environment than the normally accepted L or T shaped dock or wood piles. 
it is becoming industry standard, in fact, to place steel pilings as opposed to wood, as steel pilings have a lo longer lifespan. And conceivably, after the 2017 floods, I think you're seeing uh, more steel pile piles being used more generally. Uh, the applicant has received a general permission from the province, and as noted uh, by Councillor Reed, uh, the Section 11 application is in as of the date of application, and as far as staff is aware, has not been issued yet. The CAO's comments, uh, Mr. DeFeo uh, made some slight changes to the wording, uh, and Mr. DeFeo uh, address those. Um, so if steel piles are industry standard for docks, council may wish to consider an amendment to our current regulations to allow for them. In general, I would prefer that the Water Sustainability Act Section 11 application be approved by the province prior to variance being granted. And I have uh, shown the changes. A suggestion may be to defer the file until a Section 11 is approved by the province. So for 14824 Cars Landing, uh, the staff preferred option is that the Development Variance Permit DVP 2020-006 for 14824 Cars Landing Road be approved, thereby varying the zoning bylaw uh, to change the shape from an L or T-shaped dock to a U-shaped dock, and as well that the zoning bylaw be changed uh, to allow for a change in materials from wooden piles to steel piles. Conversely, that the development variance permit for the request be denied. Your Worship, uh, if Council would like to discuss your, this Your file. Worship, if your I worship. can add uh, to, to that, obviously. Um, one other option is the one that I indicated in my recommendations to uh, Council uh, to defer. Um, there are other options as well, so if you want to explore them, um, I'll be prepared to uh, uh, discuss them with you uh, during the discussion of uh, uh, okay. of the item. Councillor Scarrow. Just one question for staff. Um, help me out, Paul. What does a Section 11 give us? Good, great question. Uh, I think what does it give the province? It gives the province assurance that the uh, Water Sustainability Act and the measures within that act are, are being achieved. Um, and so they want to approve the work program for the for the work before it occurs. Okay, thank you for your answer. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Gamble. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I just wanted an answer, if I could, to that last question, and the uh, applicant might be able to answer that. Uh, and that question was, um, are more boats able to be accommodated um, with this U-shaped dock than with the L or T, or the L is what is currently there. So I don't know if um, Mr. Dubuis can answer that. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so generally speaking, um, an L or T-shaped dock, depending on the configuration, could also have a boat lift or two. Uh, generally speaking, a U-shaped dock, dock generally provides what they call a breakwater. Um, and so, Generally speaking, um, it would be approximately the same amount of moorage as an L or T shaped dock. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? Councillor um, Reed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wonder at some point, would it be possible to hear from the applicant about the status of the Section 11? Because that would, when we know where we're going, the, the rest of the applicant section. applicant available? The applicant is here, Your Worship. Um, Come forward. forward and yeah, no. Uh, to be honest, uh, I need to have to state your name. Tom O'Rourke. Yeah. Need my address. Okay. Uh, the way that it stands right now is uh, Shoreline is basically in charge of our application. So I'm not 100% sure what the status of uh, the 11 is. Um, I would imagine it's on its way if it's not already in. Uh, they've been submitting everything to staff. Um, mm -hmm. The identical dock resides exactly on the property north of it, mm -hmm. so it was uh, approved uh, through them for that in the same um, fish zone and all that. So I don't mm -hmm. see it being an issue, but I can track down uh, from Shoreline and find out where they are with it, but mm -hmm. I don't foresee it being okay. an issue. Um, could I also ask 
well, we have these. Um, why the reason for the variance? What was the thinking behind changing it from an L or a T-shaped dot, dot to a U-shape? Was there a, a specific reason for asking for it? Yeah, mostly to match the one that exists to the north with the boathouse on it. Instead of building something dissimilar, we would keep them all uniform and the same. Also a breakwater, as mentioned, uh, you know that the, the waves and everything can kick up pretty good and being able to drive in with uh, you know some of the size of boats that we have out there now 40 footers and 45 it's easier to park that in the middle than to have it slamming against the side and easier to span that and lift heavier boats rather than park them off the side it just makes it easier to to park i have to say this is the first application that i've seen come to council with the with the steps already on the application and i think that's credit where credit is due because it's above height so it's over 30 centimeters high at the waterline and the plans actually include access for the public on both docks which i think is is fantastic so thank you for doing that yeah i think we learned our lesson in the, <laughs> the no you listen i think <laughs> yeah. that's really really yeah. it's great to see yeah. thank you and i hope thank more you. people do that so yeah that's for Arna. yeah thank you mr mayor yeah the um you know, to, to Councillor Gamble, U-shaped, T-shaped, L-shaped, you can dock the same right. amount of boats no matter what. Um, the metal pilings, it's the way to go. I mean, it's uh, the CAO remarked that we should amend the rules, and I think that that's a, that's something that we should do. Uh, it, you know, if if you look at it, it's much more environmental to have that dock last as long as possible compared to having to replace the pilings, especially with so, uh, solid piling. And there's nothing there's not going to be any more environmental impact with the metal piling than a wood piling. So okay. uh, yeah. in all of that, um, I think it's pretty reasonable. Thank you. Councillor Oh, well, Sorry, uh, the one thing I was going to add is that uh, Shoreline's a pretty reputable company when they come to building what they build and uh, they're not going to break the rules. Thank you. So uh, I support this. Okay. Uh, Councillor Scarrow. Thanks for being here, Tom. Appreciate it. So I went down to the Calder property today and, and I seen that the dock was being constructed. I wasn't sure if it was being deconstructed or constructed, <laughs> but constructed, eh? And uh, my question is, so the extent that it goes out now, straight out into the lake, the U comes after that? No. The U is? Yeah, the, the long stretch you saw out there now with the, with the L coming off of it. Yeah is the end of the first part of the U. Okay. We will, once, if we get a variance, we will then come across and just man, mimic that on the other side. Okay, and then the other question I have might actually be for staff, but maybe you can answer it. So let's say we approve this variance today and your section 11 doesn't show up or is denied. What does that mean? Does that hmm. mean you've lost a lot of money and got to do some deconstruction? Yeah, I would imagine that's what it'll mean, but like, like stated, the uh, shoreline has been doing this for a hundred years out here and they've built probably 70% of all the docks. And, you know, they were the ones that said, can we get in here early? We would like to start before the water drops anymore. So our barge doesn't get stuck when they started those initial pilings off the shore. Uh, so they're very confident, obviously, that they're going to get it. Um, they're the experts and we kind of defer to them when they say you're going to get it. So if, if there's a provision in there that says, you know, if we don't get it, obviously then we'll have to go and, Clean it up. Revisit, but it wouldn't be the first time we've had to do something. <laughs> well, then, if I well, I still have the floor, sir, through to the chair, then uh, I'm understanding that uh, the O'Rourke family and winery is suffering the risk, that our risk is mitigated. Am I correct? Your Worship, um, because that's provincial legislation, then any enforcement would be up to the province, not to us. Our only role is with respect to the actual bylaw uh, variation or variance. In this particular case is the shape of the dock and uh, the pylons uh, um, material. So we have no jurisdiction over uh, the section 11 of the Water Act. So my understanding that it would be um, between the province and the O'Rourke's. Correct. So we, we are not engaged in that at all. Appreciate your answer, sir. I had you on the list. Uh, uh, I just want to remind council that uh, this is a variance, so we need uh, uh, a request uh, fr for the public to speak if, they, yeah. if there is anyone. Yes, thank you. Uh, Councillor Arnold. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
just to the amendment in, in the materials, I'm wondering about the process. Can we include it? Ability to amend the bylaw so that we can. Uh, no, no, no. We need to actually come up with uh, a plan, a bylaw amendment, and and a plan. So it takes some time. So, um, we move. But council can can make a motion asking staff to review the bylaw and uh, come back with an amendment in the future, uh, independent from the DVP tonight. Right. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Councillor Reid. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I would like to speak in favour of this um, variance. Just, I, to, I feel yeah. that just given the variance is not for the length, it's not for the breadth, that's completely within the current bylaw. We are just looking at a U-shaped dock. Um, it, I think the, the position that the applicant has taken in the reasons for it is mm. very sound. We have steps up to the uh, dock and down from the dock for the public. Um, and we also have letters from, of support from the neighbours. Um, staff have spoken to the protections that are in there for the use as a private dock and the, the remediation that can be taken if it's not used for a private dock. Because I think, you know, Flynn Row have seen this issue with, with other um, wineries. So, and I think that was mentioned in the report. So I appreciate staff taking the time to address that and everybody's on the same page, which is excellent. So, um, yeah, I, I, if, after the public spoken, I would like to move the motion. Okay. Thank you. Councillor McKenzie. I was just going to say the exact same thing. Uh, after the public has spoke, spoken, I would uh, move as well. Thank you. Now I have to hear if there's anybody in the gallery who wishes to address this variance. Thank you, uh, Tom. Second time of asking. Third time of asking. Here we go. Then I can take a motion. Can I move a second? All right, um, further discussion? None, those in favor? Opposed? Aye. Can you vote? So, uh, is Councillor Gamble opposed? I, no. Oh, okay, thank you. It's just that 30 second delay to get here after. <laughs> okay. I did say aye. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah, after but everybody I wasn't did. Sure if it was <laughs> Maybe you need to recognize it because yeah, people no, can't right. see. And as noted, Your Worship, uh, as a separate item, uh, the, the recommendation for 14838 Cars Landing, uh, the staff preferred option is the same yeah. um, for Garland, this property. McKen oh, I have, still have to ask if there's anybody. In yeah, the, you need still, uh, for procedural fairness, we need to ask yeah. if there's anybody from the public that needs to speak. I wish to speak to this one. It's a little further south uh, or a little further north. Um, Second time of asking, third time of asking. Hearing none, moved. Councillor Scarrell, Councillor McKenzie, moved and seconded. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, thank you, motion carries. Mm. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay. And another development permit with a variance. This will be water one. Great. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm representing a uh, development application, a uh, DP 2020-008 with variance. Uh, this application was confirmed complete on April 8th, 2020. The zoning is Rural Residential 2. Uh, the LCP designation is Rural Residential and Parkland Conservation. Um, and the purpose of the application is to propose a single family dwelling with access and request a variance for water source. The property is located on Cars Landing. Uh, it is approximately 1.69 hectares in size. Here is an aerial uh, photograph of the site. And then here is a site plan again showing the proposed single family dwelling plus access. And then a bit of a zoom in just to be a bit more clear. These are the design drawings the applicant has submitted for the 
dwelling itself. And then a short summary of the variance. It is a variance for the subdivision and development servicing bylaw uh, requesting a change from servicing RR2 zones uh, to be serviced from a water distribution system to change that to service these this zone with a water a private water source. So the distinction between municipal servicing and private servicing. A uh, bit of background on the site. Uh, the site currently has a legal non-performing cherry orchard. Um, it also has a shed, pump house, RV site, and tractor road. Uh, district mapping showed a drainage corridor on the site that would normally trigger a wrapper assessment. However, the professionals who completed the environmental assessment and geotech assessment uh, found no evidence of a stream, hence no wrapper assessment was required. Um, the applicant has a conditional water license from the province for the purposes of irrigation. Uh, the applicant has uh, applied and been approved for amendment to also service the dwelling, hence the private water source. Uh, a culvert has been added to the driveway proposed or to the access to address concerns from staff regarding drainage, uh, specifically from the washout in 2017 of Barkley Road. Uh, and staff will consider the possibilities of future uh, drainage control measures on cars landing road adjacent to the site, and we will involve the applicant in this process. Uh, currently, the site is not serviced by the municipal distribution of water system. It is a, it would require an approximate 600 meter extension of servicing. Uh, currently, staff are developing a servicing strategy for cars landing uh, that would extend the municipal water system to this site, allowing potential for this site to connect to the system in the future. Um, there is no finalized timeline for this project. Uh, I'd like to remind Council of the risks associated with private water sources, including water quality and fire suppression. These risks are decreased when properties are connected to the municipal system. And then to address the concerns from Council from the last Council meeting, uh, two weeks ago. Um, here is a landscape plan provided by the applicant. It shows the removal of 30 cherry trees from the orchard uh, and proposes the replacement of five cherry trees, four large native shrubs, six small native shrubs, and sod or grass seed for the remaining disturbed areas. To explain a bit further, um, it's not a one-to-one -one replacement because the site is uh, quite full. Uh, I'm going to jump back quickly to the aerial, just showing the extent of the cherry orchard at the moment. Um, there are no proposed plant plantings in the riparian area to the west portion of the site. Uh, there is an existing ecosystem that will remain just below the orchard, and the rest of the area is heavily sloped. Um, that being said, over 90% of the site will remain green space after the disturbance of the proposal. Uh, again, to address the second concern from Council, uh, I have received, our staff have received an updated sustainability checklist for greenhouse gas reduction and research conservation. Um, staff notes that many of the guidelines have been met. The ones that have not been met are not applicable to this scenario, uh, speaking specifically to subdivisions. Um, and they have addressed uh, and given a reasoning for everything that they are not including in terms of the guidelines. If council wants me to go into more detail for things that are not addressed, I can go into that. Um, that being said, staff's recommendation um, is that the development permit guidelines for stability, erosion, and drainage hazard, natural environment, and greenhouse gas have been substantially met. Staff recommends that can be required to register a covenant for future connection to the water distribution system. Um, staff supports option A to allow for the use of a water source. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, here are the CAO's <coughs> comments. I'll uh, leave them on the screen for a moment and let the CAO address them if he wishes. Well, uh, I guess um, my general comments are the same as the last report that was present to council in general from a technical perspective, I would say that uh, uh, the application meets the requirements, uh, except for the variance, of course, which is a consideration of council uh, tonight. Uh, however, council has the discretion of uh, um, approving or rejecting the application or finding other 
uh, ways to deal with this issue because obviously we don't comment on the political, economical and social uh, impact uh, to the community, which is actually Council's uh, responsibility. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for the planning from Council? If none, then I'll ask if there's anybody in the gallery that wishes to comment on this variance. Second time of asking. Third time of asking. Hearing none, then I need a motion. Councillor uh, Scarrow moved with uh, oh, Councillor seconding. Um, Councillor Gambo, comment? Um, well, I'll second it. Okay, it's seconded, but okay. Uh, all right. Um, comment? I would just like to say thank you to staff and for Council Arlen for raising the issue about the uh, landscaping side of things and the climate change and for the, the applicant to taking that extra step to, to bring that information to us. I think it was a, a worthwhile deferral and uh, I, I appreciate the, the work that's gone into getting it to this stage. Okay, and then um, the motion includes the Section 19 covenant for water supply. All right, doesn't... Okay. Councillor Ireland. Question. Thank you, no, and I, I do appreciate the work that uh, that's been done in the landscape plan, and and uh, I understand it's not a one for one, but turf actually does provide oxygen as well. Uh, average grass lawn provides enough for four people for a year, so <laughs> turf is a, is a. <laughs> I educate myself, Bill. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, no, my question is so. Just so I fully understand, we're covenanting so that they must connect to the water system should it come by their property. Yes. Because uh, that's that's what we want to do. Yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we want that to be done within a year yeah. of that uh, system. Uh, being system. Excellent. Is there. Thank you very much. You. Those in favor? Oh, nope. Councillor McKenzie had a question. No. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just one question on the report, the environmental report there uh, from Canyon Wren. If we go to page, as soon as I find it here again. Um, basically, they had uh, some crossed out stuff here. Uh, and it says, uh, in an effort to further improve the riparian functionality, Within the 30 uh, meter, it's missing, but uh, 30 buffer strip. The proponent will also commit to the following planting a mix of 15 two gallon pot size shrubs on the steepy, steeper grassy slope between the upper access road and the cherry orchard. And there's a whole little chunk there. And I'm just curious why that's crossed out. I'm not sure if the actual consultant is. Uh online or here if uh, he is we may ask him to uh, speak to it sort of sort of goes against our our uh, planting of trees and stuff so yeah i'm so just curious i'm not sure if uh, the consultant is here uh, oh okay i i can speak okay. to that quickly um, I believe that was removed from the report because it would require provincial approval for any plantings in the riparian area. The applicant didn't wish to pursue that, um, hence why that was removed from the report. That was an, um, something staff requested or gave the option to the applicant to either apply for that provincial approval for wrapper uh, or remove those plantings so they didn't have to go through that process. Yeah. So basically, we're we're good with allowing that to be removed then is what this report is by taking that out of that report yeah. so if the province doesn't require it it's yeah the, the plantings aren't a provincial requirement it's just a requirement that if there's anything proposed any disturbance whether it be plantings or anything in that 30 meter buffer that an assessment be sent to the province and that we receive their approval. Okay, I just want to understand that because like I say, that goes against what we're usually all about. So, mm -hmm. thanks. Except the province wants a buffer in other ways. All right, I uh, have, we. oh, you had another question as well? Yeah, just another quick question. Um, I forgot about this. The RV site that's on the property, um, 
I couldn't quite tell if it was located within that 30 meter buffer zone. And if there is an RV on it, or if it's just a pad. Uh, to my knowledge, the RV site is within that 30 meter buffer. Um, I don't know if the applicant wants to speak if it's currently being used or not. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing I'd like to see is I'd like to actually covenant that that does get removed out of that zone. So um, I don't know if we can uh, do that in this case, but I'd like to I'd like to see that happen. Maybe uh, I, maybe the CAO can. So we're asking for a section 219 with respect to the water. Right. I think we can put a proviso in the same uh, same covenant with respect to the removal of uh, of the trail. Oh, sorry, of the uh, RV. On the same covenant. Great. Yeah, you can have. You can have. Sorry, just the clarification. Did you want the removal of the site or the RV? Because if it's the removal of the site, then they have to have a wrapper because you're changing. I would assume <coughs> you're changing within the riparian area, so you would be asking them to go to the province because you're disturbing within that 30 meter buffer zone. Or you can, or you can just take the RV off, which would leave yeah. the site undisturbed, which would then, in my understanding, if I'm correct, not trigger the provincial government's requirements. Because you're not doing any further disturbance. Exactly. Yeah, that, that would be quite correct, actually. No, no, and that was why the planting were in there. They wanted to do the restoration, but in order to do the restoration, you would then have to have the wrapper assessment because you're in the riparian zone. They can still do that without uh, dealing with us, they do with the province. Yes. So we could ask for the RV to be removed, mm -hmm. but the site would be subject to the province, if I'm correct. Yeah. Anyway, that's the motion. So we no, we have a motion on already, yeah. which yeah. is the original motion. So we either uh, accept a well, we need to have an amendment, basically. Yes, the motion with the covenant, but Councilor McKenzie has a comment. Yeah, I would be uh, more comfortable with um, amending this one. And um, this is, uh, like I say, I would rather see that area fixed up if you're going to remove it and stick to what was removed off that report. Mike, uh, planning? Yeah, sorry. I just uh, had one last comment about the actual recommendation of the report. Um, the wording was, uh, there was an error in the wording from the presentation from two weeks ago and it has carried over to this uh -oh. presentation, unfortunately. So I would just like to clarify that. Um, can I be switched over back to the presentation, if you don't mind? Just so I'm jumping in super quick, sorry. Um, what's highlighted, uh, I would like to add uh to option a uh before it said that and that this or with the approval of the variance and the development uh and that despite the variance water source being granted the property uh must connect the municipal water source within 12 months i would like that to include the covenant mentioned before uh which is and that despite the variance for water source being granted the applicant must register a covenant requiring the property to connect to the municipal water source within 12 months Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify that. Before so, we forward. for the question for the CAO, can we add to that right there? Yes, but I need an amendment. And, and, and I mean, the uh, we're talking about the RV or the uh, riparian area. Riparian area. Riparian area where the RV is sitting right now. Yeah, uh, you can add that to the resolution, but we need a, a separate amendment okay. to do that. So, I, I need a motion amend. to amend the current motion is on the table to include that. Okay, so I I would move that amendment, but I don't know the proper wording for that one. Raina does. <laughs> Alberta, how do you think is best to do I that think, then? I think uh, we should uh, we should say something to the effect that. Uh, the riparian area uh, um, be uh, treated according to the uh, current uh, district regulations uh, and that uh, the RV be removed and that all this be done through a uh, section 219 covenant. The RV and 
So that covers the RV site then? To Correct. Be, yes, okay. I would say, yeah. Because okay. the RV site is, I believe, in the repairing area. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay. Uh, Councillor Arnes. We'll, we'll have to wordsmith a little bit yeah. well, later the, as well. So, <laughs> What's the surface of the RV site, if I can ask? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, your name, please. Uh, Thank you. Hi, my name is Jamie Johansson. Um, could I see the proper slide? Just the one thing that goes down next to the water. Um, no, that's that's a, a boat as good as we're going to get, I think. So down through being every alley on the whole property is made for tractor uh, purposes, seeing oh, it's yeah. a fully operational farm. Um, so every alleyway through all the trees and then there's an alleyway up through here and then another like right where the RV pad sits there's a whole nother alleyway that runs through and that's gains all the access because this all down mm -hmm. this whole section here is actually a uh, vineyard mm -hmm. and so that is the access so it is literally like there's an RV sitting on the road. You don't want to put anything. It, it's else. a fully access it's the access to the property to get to the grapes. Um, is there a good shot on the slide? Can you slide it easier with the um, oh, yeah, yeah, really nice slide there? Yeah, that's really nice. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah, down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Reina, you have it? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so you can see right where it kind of turns a little bit more white. I'm going to use the mouse here. Uh, right, there. right here, it's like it's just a, a gravel surface that rolls all the way through. And then past that, then you hit the intake for the irrigation for the whole mm -hmm. farm. And so that's the access to that. And then there's one little alleyway that jumps you up to, which would be this corridor. And that's the main access to the vineyard, mm -hmm. which is off the screen. So that surface is suitable for what it's it, it's a road okay yeah. so you know, with bearing with that in mind then um i guess that doesn't make a whole lot of sense yeah. as long as we can remove that rv then and then we'll be fine yeah i guess i guess you're right uh council mckenzie probably the amendment uh, should be modified to say only the removal of the rv mm -hmm. just yes if we can the RV. remove the rv and we'll be good with that we'll, we'll uh we don't we don't need another amendment to the amendment <laughs> we'll just Council we'll just uh, deal with the amendment it's already sold to the record <laughs> the the rv is already sold <laughs> it's already planned to go not if it not if it in, is still used as farm operation councillor scarra I don't know if to reintroduce the motion or not, sir. Uh, no, I think we're good. I, I mean, that was a friendly amendment to the amendment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those in favor? I am. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. You're Thank free. You. Go picture. Thank you. Thank and you then, and then, your worship, a vote on the main main motion as amended. Oh, that was the amendment. The main motion now as amended. So moved. Councillor Scarrow, Councillor uh, Reed. Those in favor? Aye. Both motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> and next up. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, we have a development application, uh, file number R2020-006, Lightbox Industries Limited. The zoning is C1 Town Center Commercial. The OCP Future Land Use Designation is Mixed Use Commercial. Uh, the address for this is number 439522 Main Street. And the subject this evening is a non-medical cannabis retail licensing referral. 
The location, uh, as noted at 9522 Main Street, is just there off uh, Beaver Lake Road. Subject property is 1.59 hectares, which is, equates to 3.9 acres. As you can see here from the aerial, it is a commercial complex, I would call it. So there are a number of buildings here, including the Save On Foods, the McDonald's. Uh, this particular unit is number 43 and is indicated by the star facing Main Street. And again, just showing a Google Earth rendering and making sure that rendering is facing where the unit would be approximately here. So as council is fully aware, uh, the zoning bylaw has a buffering requirement, uh, a door-to-door -door linear measurement from a, any cannabis dispensary from a daycare of 300 meters. The applicant has provided this showing that it's at 319 meters, so just barely over. So here's some site photos that were taken today. Um, fewer than usual as uh, it's the face of the building and then I took a picture of the door there. So one thing to mention here is under provincial licensing, uh, they're very strong on the security requirements and require applicants to um, do upgrades as part of the licensing process. Uh, so applicants generally uh, have to spend money uh, to get their licensing going. Um, and so they've done that here. So the background here uh, is district staff had communications with the applicant in 2019. At that time, the bylaw had a 400 meter requirement from daycares. Um, so we did tell the applicant they required a variance at that point. So they did submit for a variance on November 4th of 2019, and it was DVP 2019-009. Around that same time, council may recall, they were having a discussion as to whether or not the 400 meters was really relevant in the case of daycare specifically. Um, so what ended up following is on November 19, 2019, Council did adopt a zoning amendment bylaw uh, that reduced that requirement to 300 meters from a daycare. Therefore, the applicant uh, canceled their application on November 21st, 2019, as they were within the allowable limits of the bylaw as Council amended. So the proposal meets the zoning requirements for the C1 Town Centre Commercial Zone, which allows cannabis dispensaries and specifically it's as a principal use within that zone. And the location is more than 300 metres from a daycare and as noted, 319 metres. The applicant met the development permit exemption criteria as set out in the official community plan and has obtained a building permit for the commercial space upgrades as required for security of the licence uh, via the province. Um, and the clause specifically that they were exempted is because the improvements were less than $50,000. The district received the related referral of the licensing application from the province on September 8th of 2020. The most important thing for the province is that the views of the public have been sought through notification. It's up to the district how they do that. We cover all the bases um, and this is in line with our liquor process. Uh, so there was site signage. Uh, there were surrounding property owner letters within 50 meters of the application and there was two newspaper ads posted, one on October the 8th and one on October the 15th. So public view overview, uh, double view, uh, there were six letters have been received by the district and provided for council consideration, which is part of your packages, four equaled non-support to equal support. So some of the reasons given for non-support included traffic, parking and safety, volatility of the retail cannabis market given population density, as well as non-licensed cannabis retailer in proximity to Lake Country. Specifically, council is more than likely aware that there is a cannabis retailer on First Nation land just south of the district, and also disagreement with this type of business for the community. And some reasons given for support were better competition leading to better service, similar to liquor stores as a retail enterprise, provides a service in a safe and controlled manner, and better security for the mall due to later hours of operation. And uh, that 
particular view was from the mall operator and also noted that Save On Foods also provides that security for them. So as noted, uh, the C1 Town Center commercial zoning allows for cannabis dispensaries as a principal use. Uh, the commercial space is being renovated as per the issued building permit and in fact looks mainly complete. Uh, the offsite impacts for the proposal should be minimal given the site is built to accommodate commercial zoning and there's plenty of parking on the site as required by the zoning bylaw. However, it should be noted that unit number 43 does front Main Street where there's less parking available uh, directly in front of the store. There is a staircase to the main parking lot that you can access Main Street from and the applicant is proposing hours of operation from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. daily. The CAO comments, the application meets the regulation requirements, but council has full discretion on approval or denial of this application. And maybe I could elaborate here is, although it meets the zoning requirements, the Cannabis Control and Licensing Act does give uh, council uh, the ability to make a recommendation to the province. Uh, the province generally, if councils are not in support of these, is not issuing licenses. Um, so, leave. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. In fact, uh, um, I strongly suggest that uh, you know this is an open discussion about uh, the operation of this particular business, and uh, uh, we heard the presentation from uh, from the uh, the planner. I believe it's important to uh, consider all factors when, when you come to a decision on this one. Uh, and the fact uh, that the province will listen to the district is very important. Thank you. So the staff preferred option given the application is that council supports the request for a non-medical cannabis retail license R2020-006 located at the subject property and that this report and council meeting minutes dated October 20th 2020 be forwarded to the liquor and cannabis regulation branch for their consideration and conversely your worship that council would not support the application however that this report would still be forwarded to the province for their consideration as it does let them know exactly the discussion that council will have this evening thank you your worship thank you any questions for the plan comments oh councillor gamble thank you uh, thank you. Two questions. Uh, first of all, um, uh, I just wondered how far the um, uh, the new Mac uh, daycare is uh, as the crow flies from uh, this site. Um, so that because the new Mac building is uh, going to be a daycare and after school care for children. So that's first question. And the second question is, what are the hours of operation for liquor stores uh, in our area? Okay, so your worship, I have the, the answer to the first question. Uh, the distance from the MAC to this particular establishment is 550 meters uh, airline. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, liquor store hours are, I frequent them. <laughs> 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 More. <laughs> I, we know nothing about that. <laughs> it, um, it, it depends on uh, stat holidays and weekends, and uh, but they're pretty much nine to nine uh, in uh, at times, at least uh, nine to eleven. My understanding is most liquor stores are open till eleven p.m., yeah. but they can reduce the hours if they so wish. Yeah. Councillor Reid. I was wondering whether I, we could hear from members of the public because I'd like to hear if there are any views before I have my comment. I think they've been solicited previously and okay. we didn't you don't have get to ask any. them to speak. Yeah. No. Yeah. no, this is not like a variance or a, or a public hearing. Sorry. I did go down there and I did speak with some of the neighboring properties and I think one of the letters mentions the concern over parking. Um, mm -hmm. There is a physiotherapist next to um, the uh, proposed store um, and there are stairs going down from the main parking lot so I don't know whether it's possible to for the um, landlord to assign parking bays specifically to a business um, in order to 
allow each business to have fair access to that limit. There's a very limited amount of parking there. And also, it's not the easiest parking to get in and out of. It's angle parked on a very busy on a busy road. So I, I do share those concerns over the, the parking side of things. Um, Easier than parallel parking. I never parallel park. It's a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think the applicant is available on the phone, but um, we did have a conversation about the proposed name of the of the business, and I wondered whether we could have a chance to hear from them on the, the changes that are around that. Perhaps I could speak to the oh, changes yes. in the name. Yes. So the application, so it is, uh, as noted, Lightbox Industries is the parent company. Uh, the original name was Hobo Cannabis. Um, I guess that didn't play well. Um, and our understanding it. now is that the name will be changed to Dutch Love. Okay. Thank you. Councillor um, Campbell, did you have further or did that? Um, just, a, just a comment. Um, I, I will not be supporting this. Um, I, I believe we have one cannabis store in the community right now, and we have one just on the outskirts uh, that is um, very close by on IR7. Um, and I think that is adequate for the size of our population. Um, there were four letters who spoke in opposition, um, and I'm sure lots of people aren't aware that this is opening unless you've been walking by there. So um, I, I do not think that this is a particular asset uh, of a business in our community, as we have already one, and I suspect I have heard, I don't know for sure, but I have heard that they have been struggling somewhat. Okay, thank you. Council, um, uh, Corporate, Raina? And I think that for the size of our population, um, there were four letters who spoke in the position, um, and I'm sure lots of people aren't aware that this. She gets to say it twice. That's a loop from the previous conversation. Our apologies. I'm not sure what is happening. We have the applicant on the line uh, in the meeting. If council would like to hear from us. I have heard. I don't know for sure, but I have heard that they have. No, let's see what they can get sorted out here. A war of words. Not War of the Worlds. Reed, if you're available, would you uh, like to turn your camera on and uh, unmute your mic? Nothing. Well, he was there. He was trying to say something before, but then something was happening his, technically yeah i believe it's his audio that we were hearing back from his yeah. live version but he is oh here there he is Thank you. disappeared him are, are you available am i on now uh, audio say something before but yeah. what about now I believe, it's, technically, yeah. I believe it's his audio that we were hearing back from his yeah. live version, but he is. Oh, here. What about there now? Is. Good to go. Disappeared. Are, are you available? Am I on now? Audio. What about now? Technically, I believe it's his audio that we were hearing back from his. Reed, can you turn your speakers off? Good to go. We have a delay. We have a delay. Am I on now? What about now? I can hear you, but. Can you turn your speakers off? Bounce back. You say get rid of me. No. Bounce back. 
if we can loop him in in the audio and have him call in to the phone line. This thing can loop me. Goodness. Yeah, I can see you, but nobody else seems to be able to. <laughs> we, uh, we can see you, can't hear you now. What about, can you hear me now? I'll come in in the audio and have to call in. Have you, got the, have you got the microphone on, on your computer? I do, yeah. Can everybody hear me now? Yeah. I can see you, but nobody else seems to be able to. Okay. We can see you. Can't hear you now. What about can you hear me now? Come in. Crazy. Have you got the have you got the microphone on? On your computer? We're about done with discussion anyway. Um what Paul, what more uh, was I, it? I can put in my notes, but. Uh, let's uh, hear from uh, Councillor Ireland. I, I kind of agree with uh, with Penny a little bit. I, I just don't know if it's our business to be involved in, in market decisions like that. Um, however, I, I fear that uh, that um, that we'll see both shops close and that the the uh, somewhat illegal shop that's just outside our boundaries will be the one that survives and uh, that's certainly not in the public's best interests um, you know they're selling unregulated product um, untested product and the whole purpose of legalization was to uh, to be able to access properly tested and safe products so um, you know i too have heard that the that the uh, the present shop is, is struggling a little bit and um as anybody who's paid attention to the news, you can see that cannabis as a whole is is suffering around the country. It's just not what it, what people thought. I mean, I mean, I'm quite shocked that that somebody wants to open up another shop given the economic climate. But um, yeah, I'm 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 on board with Councillor Gamble in a way because I just can't see the survival of both these people. But I'm not quite sure that that's council's business. Okay, um, Councillor Scarrow. Yes, definitely touching on Councillor Ireland's comments. I, I do not believe it is the role of Council to decide whether businesses are viable or are unviable. When the first um, um, cannabis distributed, hello. When the first cannabis distributed uh, opened up in Lake Country, there was many hurdles for them and many investments that they had to make before that they could get in, get up and running. So they made those investments. And now I go down to what's now called Dutch Love, and I, I see on a smaller scale, mind you, uh, similar investments that have been made, uh, not based on anything that we can or will promise. I agree that Councillor Ireland has a point where if we allow the second one, they may suffer, both may suffer and both may close and we may lose the service. But in the, in the letter that I received anyway from Gavin and uh, Celine, they talk about the gray market. They talk about the gray market as if it's something that's going to go away. It's not going away. And it always will be, to some degree, an unlevel playing field for the players in this game. Uh, I just drove through uh, West Side Road and up in the OKB IB lands, I think I counted 16 different pot vendors in the stretch of about six miles. So the, the natives, um, as much as they are good at many, many things, um, they don't have an interest in regulating that. And uh, I can tell that they won't have an interest in regulating this one either. And it will continue to exist and, and, and do what it's doing. And uh, I don't see the province or even the feds having, well, maybe the feds, but having, having any opportunity or ability to change what the native land <coughs> do. So this is going to be the existing conditions for this company and others that may open in Lake Country for all time to come. And I believe that they either need to learn to deal with it, to market it differently, to uh, take the safety aspects of their products and, and use that as a, as a positive tool. 
I do not see it as council's role to deny other people opportunity in this community. Did we not just have a conversation on how to support businesses? And and so um, I, I, I'm probably in favor of this more than I am opposed to it, but it's not a hill I'm prepared to die on. Thank you. Um, Councillor Reid. <clears throat> Hello, this is this is Reed Ogden speaking. Okay. Do you have an opportunity to speak on my file? Yeah. That yes, you're. We can hear you now. Can't see you, but we. Go ahead. Whatever you. Wonderful. Are. So I'll be brief because it's been very tough getting on here today. But we um, made the application a year ago, and we were very excited to do business in Lake Country. We have a store currently in Kelowna, and we put roots down in the region. Uh, we're not a large company, but we have been able to navigate different cities. I think we have an opportunity to work with all sorts of landlords and cities, and I think we connect with all the different communities we're in. And I'm sorry as I speak, and there's more feedback on my phone. but. Uh, where Reed had explained the significance of our team. We did a name change about three months ago. It went from Hobo Cannabis to Dutch Love Cannabis. The reason for that was um, essentially the public had asked that Hobo be changed and in the spirit of council culture that um, we are more respectful of the disadvantaged, and so what we did is we did a name change uh, back in July, and Dutch Love uh, represents kind of the same ethos that um, we we uh, pay tribute to, you know, the cannabis industry and doing it in a legal way. We are fighting against, you know, the gray market, the black market, and some of the responses that um, were sent to council were from, say, Lake Country Cannabis, which we completely support. We're in this together. We've actually reached out to them because we think as an industry, this industry has to take shape. And so um, our application is a bit confusing because it was made as Hobo, but we've had, we have since made a name change to Dutch Love and um, made it more of a purpose-based business. And as part of the new business and the new ethos, we are going to be contributing back to the community. We've actually earmarked the Lake Country Food Bank as our charitable organization um, that we'll be contributing to. And so, um, in closing, we're experienced operators. We understand this is a long play. We built the store um, over the last six months, thinking that with the rezoning, we had had full commitment, um, for obviously, from the district. And so it was a bit of a surprise when we learned that, you know, this still had to go back to council. And so um, we're just hopeful that we're part of the community. All right, thank you. And I have um, Councillor Koza. Oh. Um, right. no, you go first and I'll come back. Yes, I don't think there's much more I can reiterate upon this that everyone else hasn't said. I agree with Councillor Ireland and Councillor Scarrow that uh, the gray market is there. It's not going anywhere. The gray market will be there as long as those billboards are out on the highway and as long as fireworks are being sold out there. So there's nothing we can do about that. And uh, I'd just like to say that it's a free market that uh, we have uh, three or four liquor stores here. And uh, if if it uh, sustains to have that many more marijuana shops and that's what it is. This is something that I've studied intently since I was 13 years old, so I'm well versed on the on the subject. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> sorry, folks. <laughs> we do uh, we do partake in our own backyard, and so I, I know fully well what this is all about and, and the changing face of, of cannabis uh, with legalization, and I fully support this. and. I'd like to push this motion forward. Thank you. Um, I have Councillor Gamble again. Yes, thanks. I, I just wanted to reiterate that, uh, as our CEO said, um, we do have uh, the ability to say yes or no to something like this. Uh, and so, you know, to say that we don't, that's not actually correct. 
we have the jurisdiction. Um, and um, when it comes to locating liquor stores or pubs, there is a process um, that requires uh, careful consideration. So I do think we have the ability to decide whether or not it's in the best interest of our citizens, and, and I don't think it is. <laughs> Thank you. And I have Councillor Reid. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to speak to the point about the liquor, the marijuana licenses. I believe we have two for the District of Lake Country. Am I correct, Paul? Uh, currently, we have one license. Have uh, this would be the second if Council wanted to support it. And is there a limit on the number of licenses that we have? There Before? actually isn't, and I did read that in the letter. Uh, our limit is zoning. Um, but when you start to actually do a map with the allowable zones with the buffers, it is excessively limited. Um, in speaking with this applicant in 2019, that was part of the discussion. They were trying to find a location that would meet all of the parameters of the zoning bylaw and very difficult. Okay. So it's, uh, I think they were lucky to get this spot right. uh, where it is. Um, to be able to meet all of our regulations. Uh, the previous applicant, if you recall, required a variance, in fact, to be able to get their operation. So there's very limited areas. And so we don't have a restrictive number. I'd say we're approaching probably, it's pretty close based so, on la land area available for this sort of use. And is there a distance between the cannabis shops that must be maintained? So if somebody couldn't come in and, and put a shop right next to this one, or is that possible? That is not within our zoning bylaw. Uh, so technically speaking, someone could locate right next door. Of course, they would have to go through all the same processes that we're uh, undertaking today. Okay. So I suppose, thank you for that. I suppose my point is that for the applicant, they've gone to a, a significant amount of investment in this location um, on the understanding that we had zoning bylaws in place. So they proceeded with you know, a sense of what they needed to do and they chose their location so they wouldn't need a variance. So they've been proceeding in good faith. And I kind of feel that we have to act in good faith for them as well. Um, they don't they're not asking for a variance. We're not trying to squeeze a square peg into a round hole. However, I do accept the comments that are the challenges that are posed to the industry by the presence of the grey market. But I completely agree that that's the nature of free market capitalism. Um, and perhaps this wasn't how we envisaged or the uh, federal government envisaged things rolling out. But they are, you know, the situation is as it is. And I feel that we would need to be fair to this applicant, so I would support this application um, in, in, in that sense of a level playing field. But recognising some of the concerns that are raised and the fact that the grey market is going away and some of the concerns that Councillor Gamble and members of the public have raised, then maybe we need to look again at the zoning bylaw to actually limit the number of cannabis shops, um, available so that the current applicants in stream continue their business and that the concerns of the community addressed and so that is where I see the solution to some of the concerns raised um, in some of the letters around competition. Thank you. Um, Councillor McKenzie. Thank you Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Thanks Paul for the for the uh, presentation. Um, so uh, I agree with a lot of what's been said. Um, you know, uh, I was um, happy to see us get our first shop here in town for sure. And um, I've been involved in the struggles with dealing with our grey market and uh, talked to our upper levels of government and the RCMP. And they're, like you say, I don't think that grey market is going to go away, unfortunately. They uh, definitely, definitely um, not helping the market out by any means. Um, I also do agree that um, as much as I'd uh, want to see business succeed, um, I don't think it is up to us to um, determine the free market end of things. So um, I struggle with that one a little bit, but I, I do think that, um, um, you know, if there's room for these two businesses, I think um, somehow the upper governments needs to to help these guys out because it's uh, way better to have a regulated source rather than these 
other sources where we don't know what's happening. So I, I'm struggling with this one a little bit, but I, I do think the free market is uh, is where we should be. Thank you, Councillor Scott. <clears throat> Thanks, Councillor McKenzie, for your comments. Um, I've been in business throughout my life, several different kinds of businesses in different parts of the community. And in almost every case, competition showed up shortly after I opened whatever it was, whether it was a store or a service or whatever. And my business improved right after the competition showed up. So I say to the existing retailer and the provincial or the proposed retailer that the fact that both of them exist in the community raises the profile of the industry itself and together if they work together they could definitely educate and convince the public of the safety factors and features that they offer as compared to the gray market and there is a portion of the community that i'm sure would pay a little extra for that, for that assurance. So in my opinion, I agree with Councillor McKenzie that uh, uh, we aren't here to suggest whether or not we can support X number of one type of business. In my opinion, that's not our job. Now, Councillor Gamble disagrees that we have the right to say no for based on a plethora of reasons. Eh? But I agree with Councillor Cara Reed that we definitely have to act in good good favor, in good fashion. And I believe by denying this request that that sends out a message that uh, we don't really respect people who follow the process and do the types of things. And I'm pretty sure that in the future, if uh, Dutch Leaf or Dutch Love opens up, that they're going to have a whole bunch of Dutch people down on their sidewalk with signs and placards complaining about that name. Mm -hmm. So I wish them well. I hope that they co cooperate with the existing businesses in this community, and I hope that together they win and do shrink the gray market. Thank you. Councillor Arnon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm a little bit more optimistic than you guys are about the gray market. There's this thing called prohibition. Happened a long time ago. The mayor was alive, but the rest of us weren't born yet. <laughs> but I know it just way. takes time. The the shops on First Nations lands are a whole nother matter. But the rest of the grain market, it will eventually go. It'll take time and it's gonna take a long time, but it will go slowly. Um I'm still on the fence. You know, I respect what Councillor Gamble has to say and and I respect the fact that people in the community, although you know we might not be the people to decide about what businesses should go forward, uh, I'm sure the community has strong views on that. Um, I'm still in the middle of a bit. What uh, Councillor Reed had to say though about having to have goodwill back, that that greatly concerns me because I'd like to know really how this has gotten so far where there's been such a big investment of money yet we could say no tonight mm -hmm. and uh i saw that in some of the letters that there was some talk about the support from staff and and how it was all good so i mean it's very disconcerting to me that i have to feel like i have to say yes because these guys have invested a lot of money i feel uh mm -hmm. I don't feel very good about that, and I don't think any of us should. Um, it, the business should be on its merits, not whether they have invested money or not. And I've got to say that I feel I'm, I'm feeling a little bit okay. Well, if they've invested money, I mean, I know they have a sign, I know they've they've outfitted the business, so yeah, you feel a bit bit guilty. But are we acting in bad faith when it's a it's our decision to be made, and that decision has not been made yet? So I'm just not sure how how this business has gotten to invest that kind of money before the approval has been made. Yeah. Yeah, um, if I may, Your Worship. So 
as per the discussion, this is a new industry, uh, much like prohibition has been mentioned. It's going to take time and I think the province is learning. So one of the things to get rid of the gray market is that they're putting people through what they call a fit and proper test, where they do a forensic analysis of a person's uh, finance finances to the time that they were an adult. So if you're like 50, they can go back at the records till you're 18. They get a third party to do that for the province. The first application, if you recall, we council it was brought to council before the fit proper test was done. That created an expectation. So the province reached out to staff and asked us, do you, do you want us to send you these referrals before a fit and proper test or after? Um, so they're revising things. We said after because the expectation at that point means that they've been approved by the province uh, and that there's no dirty money in their finances over their lifetime. Additionally, uh, people are concerned with security and so is the province. And so they've released to your question uh, through your worship is they're requiring these applicants to prove out security as part of the licensing, which requires that investment that you're talking about. And so it does put council in an awkward position in some way. Thank you. Good. Uh, Councillor Reid. Thank you. Um, sorry, just to respond to Councillor Allen's, I apologize if I mis-expressed myself. I did not mean because they've paid money, we have to grant them a license. What I was in, in trying to in, in express was the fact that these, these applicants have followed the process that council have set out and the government has set out for them. So they have acted in good faith. They have met the requirements of the zoning bylaw in the position of their shop. Therefore, they have shown good faith in that side of the process. The province, has, as Paul explained, it has asked them to invest money in order to do their side of the licensing. But I wasn't meaning that because they've invested money, we have to grant them a license. I apologise that it came across that way. Um, and also I, to speak to the grey market, there is the other side of the market. We live in a beautiful agricultural area. We have some very green fingered members of the public. And I think there is also the aspect of homegrown cannabis, which you know, can be grown in your back garden under the current regulations, completely happily um, organic. So there is that element also of the fact that it's the homegrown cannabis uh, users and growers um, who are able to, to provide their own own uh, cannabis. So that is going to, to impact the market that's available for the commercial suppliers. But um, again, I would say that I would support this application, but I do hear the concerns that are being raised by members of the public and by Councillor Gamble and the other councillors. Okay. So I do think we need to look again at the bylaw and the zoning bylaw to address those concerns and to uh, address the concerns of the community. Thank you. I had uh, uh, the CEO. Yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, make absolutely clear that uh, uh, council has unfettered authority to uh, uh, either uh, support or not support this application um, with no consideration uh, for uh, specific investments from the company. Well, that, that's something that you consider, obviously, mm -hmm. as part of your process, but uh, uh, from, from a legal perspective, that's not relevant. Uh, the other thing is that uh, there's a lot of companies or or individuals that develop and and, and come uh, to municipalities with applications and they've already made a number of investments on the property, assuming that they may be successful. Um, but but that's part of the, the the process. So there's nothing we can do about that. Thank you, uh, Councilor McKenzie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so the one thing that I didn't hear us um, answer to was the parking issue. And I agree with um, Councillor Reed that uh, that corner is not uh, the greatest parking. I was a regular visitor of uh, Sun City Physiotherapy, which is the neighbor, and uh, realized full well that a lot of times you couldn't park there. So that was before this business. So there's definitely a parking issue there. Um, so I don't know if we, you know, if we approve this, if you can somehow address that, because I do not want to see another Turtle Bay crossing uh, as far as, you know, if we can avoid it. Hey, Councilor McKenzie, this is Reed Ogden speaking. I know the landlord is very supportive of the application and would be able to make those arrangements. Again, I'm speak, not exactly ready to speak for the landlord, but I know they're very supportive and they're very con 
concerned about the well-being of that mall and the guest experience. Okay. Um, yes, Councillor Scarra. Well, my intention was to make a motion, but I just wanted to uh, kind of react to Councillor McKenzie's comments before I did that. Mm -hmm. And uh, being a local city transit driver, I sit in front of many pot shops for sometimes 10, 15 minutes. Say, eh? The people that go to a pot shop are there for less than a minute, usually. And the people who go to a physiotherapy appointment are there for about an hour usually so there's a, there's a difference in the kind of business that that is eh? and with the top parking lot being available um, it's so easy just to drive around so if the mayor would allow i would move option a okay and look for a seconder uh -huh. seconder councillor uh, koza further discussion i have penny or uh, councillor gamble uh, thank you. Um, I just just wanted to respond about the um, parking issue. Um, if in fact Councillor Scarrow is correct, and each customer only spends one minute or two in this building, uh, in this um, in this uh, pot shop, then uh, in fact we could see a tremendous. If in fact it is successful, we could see a tremendous problem with parking. Um, because uh, the difference is when you have physiotherapy or optometrist, uh, you're going to have maybe, you know, a dozen, maybe 15 people uh, come to the um, to that place in a day. Um, here, you could have the potential for, you know, 60 people an hour by the sound of it, uh, which is an extremely busy location if it's successful. So, um, and I don't, I don't think Save On Foods would be too happy to lose those parking spots that are, are provided for them uh, and some of the businesses above. So I still think this is not a well thought out um, place and uh, I don't think it's appropriate. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Reid. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I would concur with the comments around the parking. Um, one of my specific concerns was with a physiotherapist, you've got a, a choice of either parking on the top parking lot, but then going down very steep stairs, which if you're attending a physiotherapy clinic is not going to be the ideal thing to be do doing. And to get out of that parking space is there, you actually have to reverse across the center line into the path of the oncoming traffic and a high volume uh, location like that, if it does see that level of, of traffic and frequency of visits and is going to pose a greater risk than perhaps the existing businesses which are there, like the notary and the opto optometry clinic, which have longer appointment times and perhaps fewer visitors. So I do remain very, very concerned about the liability that we have um, with those parking spaces and the process of getting out of them in particular. Okay. Councillor Reid, am I able to respond to that? Yes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I have a motion on the floor. I can't hear. Oh, any okay. From no problem. Um, I'll hear from the planner, though. Thank you, Your Worship. I just want to pro provide a little bit of clarity around parking. Of course, these concerns are parking is always a concern. As per zoning, uh, this complex meets the parking requirements. Um, the applicant has noted, and, and I believe the letter from the landlord would suggest that they could probably make some arrangements. Um, we typically don't tell private property owners how they uh, can use their parking other than the zoning requirements and actually the BC building code. So just to be clear on that issue. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have a motion on the floor. Those in favor? Uh, I need, um, oppose? Opposed. Uh, Councillor Gamble, Councillor McKenzie, and Councillor Ireland opposed. We have two, four in favor. Motion carries. So, so can we clarify who's voted in, in opposition? In opposition, Councillor McKenzie, uh, Councillor Gamble, and Councillor Ireland okay. in opposition. All right, thank you. And motion carries. Okay. Thank you, Council. Now, monthly building stats. Anybody going over those? No, your uh, that's for information only, Your Worship. Okay. And 
The next item is uh, Community Economic Recovery Infrastructure Grant from, uh, from Mr. Matt. Vader. Yeah. That's what I was waiting for. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have a presentation because it's a because it's for a grant application. So I did not prepare a presentation because there's not really anything until we get the grant. So this is a request for Bruce a grant Francisco, application. Second, Councillor Ireland. All in favor? <laughs> Can I have a question? Um, discussion? Yeah, discussion. <laughs> Carry on. Um, sorry, Mr. Reda. What is the budget for the work? Is the budget the, the full quarter of a million or is the budget over quarter of a million? Are we by approving going for this grant, are we approving an additional capital spend? No, the, this is 100% funded at the 250,000 based on an engineering estimate that we have plus the contingency. Uh, so it's total <laughs> And how much is the contingency? 25%. 25%. So thank you very much. Yeah. Those in favor? Both. <laughs> yeah. It said 100% in the report. Yeah. Yeah. No, the project budget matches with what the grant is. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, subdivision development. Yeah, Your Worship, the next uh, one is the Subdivision and Development Service in Bylaw 1121-2020, and it's uh, uh, submitted for adoption. And we dealt with that previously? Correct. I need a motion. Councillor Reed, Councillor okay. McKenna. Discussion? Hearing none, it's for adoption. Those in favor? Aye. Oh, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, tax exempt amendment, uh, second, third readings done to be adopted. Uh, uh, good evening, Council. I just need to mention that we did not receive any correspondence from our newspaper ads on our property tax exemption bylaw. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Guest yeah. <laughs> so moved. Uh, Councillor Gamble moved and Councillor Arnon second. Uh, those in favor? Aye. Opposed Aye. and carries. Thank you. All right. Uh, no report from in camera. I don't recall the Board of Education highlight meetings. Councillor Reed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wondered whether there was any discussion at the Board of Education about the noise issues around the construction of the middle school. And I know we've had a number of concerns from local residents, particularly in the senior mm. centre, about the level of noise caused by the construction. And I just wondered whether there was any discussion on that. I don't know that there was. I haven't heard anybody. Is our no? anybody raise it with our? Anybody raise it with our representative, Amy Gerslinger or whatever? I don't know. No. no. All right. Okay, maybe we should give her the, give her the heads up. Yeah. Your Worship, do you wish us to uh, uh, talk, talk to, to staff for the school district and let them know yeah. uh, the complaints? Oh, sorry. So uh, it is my understanding that our staff has been in contact with the staff with the staff at the school district who have been talking to their contractors about the noise. Excellent. Great. Thank you very Thank much. You. Okay, and Okanagan Basin Water Board report. That was the one that uh, we sent some stuff around, I think. Yeah. The strategic priorities, councillor items. Counts with, starts with councillor. I'll give Penny the first go around. Council well, I can't really think of anything tonight, but uh, just hope everybody keeps well and uh, we'll see you at the next meeting. Okay, thank you. And Councillor Kozub. Okay, in light of uh, the recent happenings in our community, I'd like to bring forward a notice of motion. And the notice of motion will read uh, that staff be directed to investigate and report back on amendments to the zoning bylaw to permit farm retail sales in rural residential zones. If we could move forward with that, please. All right, that come back. Well, uh, Your Worship, uh, we, we are aware of the issue. Uh, we've been dealing with the issue. Uh, and so I, I can safely suggest that if you wish to actually move second and vote on this motion tonight, we are prepared to move along. Okay. 
You want to move the motion then? No, I can move Councilor, it tonight. Uh, yeah, and Councilor Reed will second it. And uh, we don't need to discuss it tonight. And, um, uh, but okay. we can. Yeah. I was going to say that um, I would declare a conflict of interest or perceived conflict of interest and will not be part of the conversation. All right. Um, well, we can adjourn and turn you, you turn you off because this is the last the council items were the last you've already given yours. You're already moved. You're already <laughs> muted. <laughs> Good night. Okay, so uh, Councillor Gamble is withdrawn from the meeting. No, no, we have further discussion. Uh, yeah, Councillor McKenzie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so one other thing with this, um, um, last night uh, we had our AAC meeting and I kind of, um, with us doing a, um, adopting the egg plan, it was um, one thing that we made quite clear was that we were going to support agriculture in our community and we had a number of steps to do that. So um, again, in order to to value their opinion, I think the AAC also needs uh, to comment on this and that's what I brought up last night, but um, not an official comment. So on our next AAC meeting, if we can have that put on to the agenda, um, that would be nice to at least have a discussion about this. Yeah, zoning amendments that uh, are uh, affecting or impacting agricultural um, goes to the committee. Go to the committee automatically. Okay. So we'll, I, it'll be I just want to make sure because that's yeah. Like I say, we have trouble enough keeping people on the committee. If we don't include them in on these decisions, then it uh, is not going to help us yeah. alleviate that problem. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and Councillor Ireland. Yeah, I'm going to support this because we sit here so often and we talk about agriculture and how important it is to our community. <clears throat> so. We've got to support agriculture. I don't think that there's too many guys selling apples that are making very much money. And uh, we're just lucky that they're growing them right now. So um, I think we've got to take every opportunity to support those farms when we can. Okay, uh, Councillor Scarl. I had a conversation with a farmer friend of mine earlier today and I remembered when my parents were in the business in the 1970s, there was a big uh, demonstration of sorts from farmers about getting 10 cents a pound. Mm -hmm. Here we are 50 years later looking for 10 cents a pound. It just seems to me that any roadblocks we put up in front of a farmer managing to retail a small portion of his crop because they can't retail at all, uh, that's the balance they need in order to lose money at the co-op. <laughs> Uh, with their apples, so I fully support this, and I, it's just a no-brainer to me. You're not old enough to remember the <laughs> farmers' strike that when the railroads didn't have refrigerated cars and they would ship to a, the east, <laughs> and, <laughs> and before refrigerator, the uh, the slogan was uh, with. It was probably soft fruit because it was uh, they were box cars were heating up, and the farmers wanted a penny a pound or they were on the ground. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> no, so it, if you can't make production, it's difficult to stay uh, doing what you are. Anyway, we're at um, uh, council items and uh, the. No, items. we have to vote on. You have to vote on the motion, Your Worship. Yeah, we do have the motion from yes. Councillor uh, Koza. Uh, those in favor? Yeah. Opposed. Motion carries. It'll go as an amendment to the Agricultural Committee, and then it will be brought back to Council as to um, where fruit can be sold. Yeah, it will be referred uh, to the Planning uh, Department for right. a review of zoning. All right, good, good. Councillor uh, Scarrow. Yeah, all I got today is I managed to do a little bit of preliminary work and I'm happy to say that the Santa bus will be going around this year to the oh, schools. Wow. We have um, um, 
modified our delivery of of, of what we do uh, for the Santa bus to keep it as safe as possible for COVID. And we've contacted, I contacted all of the schools today and they're all very, very interested in still having that happen. As a matter of fact, they feel it's quite essential, both from the perspective of collecting for the charities, which definitely need our help. And secondly, from the mental health of their children, they feel that uh, there's enough being taken away from kids these days that that should not be. So the response I received today was very good from the schools. And unfortunately, there is no way that we can manage a visit to the seniors' homes uh, under the present conditions. So we may be limited to simply parking our bus in their parking lot and allowing them to look at it from the windows. Mm -hmm. So all good news, but- you have dates for it yet? Uh, excuse me, that'll be December 10th in Lake Country, and there will be a community event um, up at the Save on Foods parking lot, the one we've been discussing all night. <laughs> Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Arna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I I just noticed that uh, Mr. Gadsky was was standing there, and he missed the chance to talk at public comment because he was he stepped out because our discussion took quite some time there. So I don't know if we're able to let him speak. Uh, in what? Yeah, uh, I need a motion to. I make that motion. Yeah, Councillor Arna, Councillor yeah. McKenzie. Yeah. Did you change your I, th hands? I thought you were just observing tonight. But. <clears throat> that was last night and earlier this afternoon. Alan Gatsky, 15975 Old Mission Road, Yama. I put these clothes on early this morning and had a full day in the orchard, and I'd like to know what to do tomorrow. I have apples that will freeze on the trees probably Thursday or Friday. The opportunity to sell them where I have been selling them for nearly a decade has been uh, taken away, has been threatened to be taken away from me. The landowner, Alan Marks, as a result of the letter written uh, by bylaw, it indicates to me that he's not allowed to farm that piece of property that he's farmed for the last 40 years nor lease it out to somebody like myself. And that right that he has is the difference on whether or not I can continue um, to pick my, to harvest my crop and sell it tomorrow. <clears throat> I've written a number of emails and we've had a lot of interactions. You've used tonight on two examples, what's called some people call it grandfathering in the Supreme Court and in the Municipal Act, it's referred to as legal non-conforming. The media that the media coverage that happened in the last week brought forward bylaw officers from other jurisdictions that outlined the legal rights under legal non-conforming. And the case of agriculture that's continued started initiated by the owner prior to the existence of this city, prior to the existence of the zoning bylaw. And now I am told that the zoning bylaw is the reason I cannot utilize my agricultural rights. And the fact that the discuss this is the only opportunity, the discussion that I would hope I was hoping mm -hmm. for council intervention or council to somebody to review what's going on. I've sent a number of you quoting the Municipal Act, and if you want to see it in the Supreme Court, I'll give it to you there as well. But the action that's been taken by the District of Lake Country bylaw, pursuing a complaint, and don't get me wrong, whether you're competition or complainant, or a counselor, you have the right to make a complaint, but it should be legitimate. And if it sticks like this one has, there shouldn't be intervention um, or special treatment for the complainant. And what I feel is special treatment, non recognizing legal non conforming. It's so straightforward. Who in this house doesn't know 
what legal non-conforming is. And that that right is transferable through a lease and through the sale of a property. Now I'm faced with leaving my crop on the trees and you know what the weather forecast is, you know, like minus eight, minus 10, unusually cold. Mm -hmm. Apples don't like that. I've had to stop sales so that I wouldn't be in contravention, start collecting coupons from by oh, pardon me, my terminology, start collecting fines. So I've chose to comply with the order and pull down my opportunity to sell those apples, thinking that common sense would come through. I hear how many times tonight support agriculture. It's lipstick. Because wait, not taking action tonight, in essence, forcing me not to harvest because if I can't sell them, I ain't picking them. There's already been damage done. And I implore you to take a few more minutes tonight. There's two important people here. There's a person who writes those emails right there. And I will bet you dimes of dollars every one of them knows what legal nonconforming is. And a few questions would legitimize that. And I could be back in business. And I could harvest my apples and I could put people to work. Okay. It's sad. Thank you. Councilor McKenzie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So are we able to somehow put a moratorium or something, however you want to call it? I'm not sure about a moratorium, but um, it might be a wrong term. It, but uh, with the exceptions, no, something. Uh, Recognize legal non-conforming. We're uh, we're still in council. Uh, council um, Alberto, your worship, uh, um, uh, Reina has uh, some comments about that. Councillor Gamble has uh, withdrawn, uh, recused herself, so uh, that not an issue here. She's not in conflict. Um, so uh, the issue is how, uh, Reina? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, to place a moratorium on um, this issue, Council would need to be very specific on what that moratorium entails. So if Council would like to place a moratorium on the sale of produce on RR2 zoned lots, then they can do that, but they should be aware that that will apply to all of the RR2 zoned lots in Lake Country. In addition, moratoriums need to be have an until clause attached to it. So a moratorium until council would like to address and as council, as the previous motion was brought up, the zoning amendment or investigation thereof. Um, unfortunately, the courts have determined that council cannot do a blanket non-enforcement of an issue. Mm -hmm. So you would not be able to place a motion saying that all Apple sales on RR2 not be enforced. Okay. And um, we did investigate the legal nonconformity under the Local Government Act, and this property does not comply with the legislation. Your Worship, uh, I propose that uh, a resolution be approved by Council uh, to uh, not enforce on that particular property, so it's specific for that property, uh, due to public interest. Uh, or the interest of the community. So that would probably help uh, the situation until we have an opportunity to make zoning changes and uh, and come back to council with that. In the meantime, uh, Mr. Gatsi can continue his activity there. All right. Uh, uh, Sir, I'd make, uh, I'd make that motion uh, specific to Mr. Gatsky and his location. Is that possible, Alberto? Yeah, that location. We're talking okay, about that location. But we also need that term on it which uh, would be when staff has investigated this opportunity and come back to us. Would would that be the term that we talk about? The moratorium until a specific date? 
what you what what date would we have on that Alberto or not enforce? So, so we're I'd talking about non-enforcement here. I would recommend non-enforcement specific to that property address until such time that the zoning bylaw investigation, as per the previous motion, is brought back to council for consideration. Yeah, so that's that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, you move. I'll second. Councilor McKenzie seconded. Councilor Reed, do you have a comment? So I just wanted to clarify: Are we talking about a, the moratorium? Do we need a moratorium on the Apple sales from the RR2 and the bylaw? Moratorium? No, no, just, just the one. enforcement. Just, just, just the enforcement part. Okay, yeah, I would be happy to support that. Okay. Any further discussion? No. Those in favor? We are. Well, I'm in favor, but I just want to ask one more question. Uh -huh. So, in terms of the the legal nonconformity, have we just looked at that? Have we taken that to legal counsel? Where are we at in that process? What facts? Um, in conjunction with planning department, we pulled the ortho photos from back to 2006 and we pulled the sections of the bylaw prior to up to incorporation of the District of Lake Country and pursuant to the sections in the Local Government Act. That tent in its current location was not in place prior to the adoption of the zoning bylaw adopted by the District of Lake Country in 2007. Can you speak to that? It's, it's obvious that the legal non-conforming issue around the tent, um, I, don't, I don't declare that. The legal non-conforming is to do the business of farming on that property. Ella Marks has owned it it, the family has owned it mm -hmm. since the mayor was a young child. <laughs> they farmed it ever since then. Uh, the legal non-conforming that I'm de declaring or requesting be validated is his right to farm that land. That legal right for him to farm that land can be passed to a leaser such as myself, and it can be passed through the sale of a property. I don't care about the tent. What this has done has made it illegal for Alan Marks to farm that property. Um, That's what the, the, the zone. I, yeah. Anyway. So, Your Worship, uh, maybe Rain, I can clarify that further. Thank you, Worship. I just confirmed with our manager of planning, and that is not the case. There is no restriction on farming that property in our zoning bylaw for the property owner. The issue that was presented to Mr. Gatsky was the tent and the sale of apples that were not grown on that property from that tent at that location. And that is the legal nonconformity we are speaking of. Yeah. Okay. He can farm it. He can farm it, and I can farm it. And now you can sell that. It's My farming operation which includes that lease and six other leases in the district of lake country i'm allowed to take the produce that i grow on any of those properties and sell them at the fruit stand that i have on any one of those properties and if it means that i can't have the tent if there is a legal issue about that then i can sell apples without a tent on that property if that lease in place just as i sell the prunes from that property at my fruit stand in oyama Mm -hmm. And within the zoning bylaw, you'll find the definitions around farming operations and my ability to do that. Okay. And if if I if it pleases the district, I'll do that without a tent. There's a another building there, but it's way more dangerous. Mm -hmm. It would be silly to do it there. You're asking for trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your worship, I think that the motion actually that council approved about the non enforcement deals with that too so yeah. the, the, the tent can line. stay the tent can stay out. of course you're missing the all point. right and we'll sort out the issue of whether they can farm there they can farm there and uh, whether it's yeah and legal i can farm there too not. yeah and that's all permitted uh -huh. but when i when i'm a, when i can farm there I'm allowed to do the, it's called the business of farming and you read the zoning bylaw and, and the different things of what farming operations, what a farmer is. Mm -hmm. and the fact that they have an issue with a tent there. Okay, I'll do the same thing without a tent. It was, would that satisfy the district? Um, 
because the apple's coming from another property. You can do anything not, now with the tent or without. We'll just amend that. Uh, yeah, part but that, of the, uh, what the problem is is that the that this complaint has damn it your business. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, we're looking to rectify that. Uh, Council McKenzie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so yeah, um, Mr. Gasky brings up a valuable uh, comment in the fact that most small farms are not uh, exactly profitable anymore. So like he has six leases. Um, you know, if we went to Roger Bailey's, he's got a bunch of leases. Everybody around has where they're bringing fruit in from other places to sell. So I think we need to make sure that our bylaws are good with that and that um, we recognize the fact that this is a common practice and we're not uh, out to um, cause any more grief for our farmers trying to make uh, a living. Thank you. And that's what we're looking to do. Councillor Reid. If I can just sum up from my, my perspective, the um, proposal to avoid, to, to negate any charges at this time allows Mr. Gatsky to continue to do yes. the business that he has been doing in selling the fruit from that property. Yes. Uh, I think Raina staff have confirmed that the farming on the property is permissible under the current zoning. Mm -hmm. And the proposal today that was proposed by Councillor Koza we'll look at the possibility of addressing this in the longer term so yeah. that this can be a short term mm -hmm. issue and that Mr. Gatsky has the comfort of the zoning, potential change to the zoning bylaw so that he avoids the cost of having to go through a temporary use permit, which was the other route that staff had suggested. Yeah. So that I, just to sum up, I think that's where we've got to tonight. So, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Al. And uh, we're coming in and clarifying things. Uh, could have done it sooner. I didn't know he was here to speak. He didn't speak at. He uh, was here. Oh, okay. Anyway, yeah. Thank you. Uh, that was good. Um, and uh, where did I get to? I just did. I just saw that. It, uh, uh, I, I'm going to skip one thing I had to say, and I'll talk about that later uh, in another day. But I have Councillor Scarrow. No, you. I have you. It's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but carry on. <laughs> you really were a teenager of prohibition, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I'd like to put a notice of motion together to uh, change the materials used in the pilings. I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. common practice now. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, our uh, our bylaw does say deck construction with wood pilings. With wood pilings, and it, it actually makes sense to use steel pilings. And mm -hmm. and in fact, there's lots of people out there breaking the rules um, by doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, wood and it, it shouldn't be. It, there's no it. environmental reason whatsoever for it. And in fact, it's better to have them last longer than. Yeah, it is for them to last less. Uh, do you need a so, so no? Can, can we do this as a nozzle motion and we bring it at the yeah. next meeting for approval? Yeah, yeah. It's just because. Yeah, no. I, I just want to make sure we don't do things on the fly. So I'm just bringing yeah. it forward yeah, as yeah. a nozzle well, motion for the next meeting. To it's not time sensitive, I guess. Let's. That's yeah. what. No. Not not like this one before. No. Yeah. Okay, it's not quite so time critical. No. Sensitive. Yeah. The only thing I the other thing I'd like to add for anybody that's watching is listening let's please try to be nice oh yeah out in the community to those people that are working in places that have rules governing what's going on in them because if we don't they're going to close there's been a substantial number of, of losses from small businesses from employees that are tired of getting yelled at by people out there and it is not their job to get yelled at if that business requires you to put a mask on, put a damn mask on. Or else there won't be a business there. All right, thank you for all those listening. 
Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, yeah, I do. Uh, I do support uh, Councillor Ireland's comments on that. It's very important. Um, I've got a question uh, that seems to be getting asked is uh, whether the district is doing anything for Halloween, seeing that uh, it will be in a few days here. So is there anything going on that we know of? I haven't heard. Well, I have to uh, ask the fire chief usually, but I don't think anything is happening. Nothing? Okay. No. Just uh, it seems to be a regular question, so I was Your curious. Yeah, no, that's a good point. We've had that question asked quite a few times, and the answer is no. So the fireworks and celebrations has been cancelled. Okay. Usually did hot chocolate and hot yeah. dogs or whatever at okay. the just, park. Yeah. just want we, to confirm because yeah. it is a common one I'm getting here lately. And we've also issued the statements on Facebook and our Instagram okay. social media. So we have reached out to many in the community about that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, and and hey, hey, guys, he's not done yet. <laughs> and uh, just short and sweet, just want to acknowledge uh, we're getting into food bank time. So Santa bus and stuff obviously is very good, but uh, make sure any chance you get, uh, make those contributions to the food bank. All right, thank you. And Councillor Reid. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to start off by just um, acknowledging Carl Featherstone, who passed oh, away yes, yes. Um, tragically um, last week. Um, and our thoughts are with his young family and all of his friends and also the firefighters who knew and worked with him. Um, and I hope we can, as a district, find a way to support them mm -hmm. um, in the coming months. Um, on Halloween, I have to say Cars Landing, uh, Wendy Malkvist is organizing a socially distanced COVID safe Halloween uh, trick or treat um, mm. session uh, for uh, the community. And you can find information on the Cars Landing Community Association webpage, carslanding.org. Um, it does require sign up of the participants of houses who want to offer trick or treats and kids who want to trick or treat just so we can do contact tracing and there's certain requirements about laying out the food, uh, the treats and things like that. But uh, that will be on Saturday. Um, and finally, there's the Cars Landing Community Association AGM tomorrow, which is a Zoom slash Google something or others um, meeting at starting at seven o'clock. And again, you can sign up on the Cars Landing Community page and make your views known. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Young at heart. <laughs> All right, we uh, are adjourned. Good night. Whoa. No.